Faith Fulfilled Book 1 Mike's Legacy Chapter 1 The Origination One of the questions that many ask throughout their lives is, How did the world begin? Why are we here? How are we here? Who or what created us and why? What is our purpose in this world? Those questions have circled endlessly throughout the course of history and time. Very few can say they know the answer. In the Minecraft realm, though, there is a definite answer. In the beginning of time, there was a void. Nothing but darkness and silence filled this empty void. However, there was one being who existed within this void. His name was Notch. No one knows where he came from. In fact, nobody really knows who he truly is. But what we do know is that he created everything. He created the deep blue seas, the seemingly endless sky, the soft, gentle winds, and the swaying trees. He also planted the seeds to all life forms. The soft sheep, the growling wolves, the cowardly ocelots, the splashing squids, and even us. Notch knew, in order for this world to sustain itself without him interfering, it would have to have a balance. A balance between the forces of creation and destruction. Creatures naturally have the ability to reproduce, which covers the side of creation within the balance. These creatures also needed to eat, so they hunted on one another, which satisfied the need for destruction. Life is to be created, then destroyed. If there is too much destruction, then eventually all life on the planet will be wiped out. Too much creation, then over time there wouldn't be enough room on the planet to hold all the life being created. One side cannot overpower the other for too long, or the delicate balance will be broken, dooming the world and those who live in it. However, us humans seem to be outside the forces of destruction. We reproduced, but no creatures haunted us as we are on the very top of the food chain. Notch realized that this could be a very big problem, so he made it so human hearts can be corrupted by evil. Like creation and destruction, there has to be a balance between the forces of good and evil within the human race. This balance echoes the other, as good, the force of forgiveness, kindness, and peace, represents creation, while evil, the force of hate, malice, cruelty, and greed, represents destruction. Those corrupted by evil typically kill, which satisfies the need for destruction within the human race. As the course of history moved along, Notch quickly realized that humans are incapable of maintaining the balance, as far more of us were becoming corrupted than Notch originally thought. The hearts of men are just too easily seduced. Notch had to find a way to restore the balance before it was too late. He then decided that he would gift a bloodline whose descendants would be the ones who maintain the world's balance. The first of the bloodline born with the duty of maintaining balance would be born. This man would be gifted with special abilities so that he may easily fight off whatever it is that is threatening the balance. These abilities were supernatural. You could call them superpowers. The most powerful ability by far that Notch gifted this being was the ability to open a portal to the nether by simply opening his palm. The nether, a place where the balance breakers go to be eternally tormented until they can be saved. In the palm of his hand, the portal screams open and sucks in the balance breakers, forever sealing them away. The power began being known as the Legacy, due to the fact that once the man died, his offspring would also be gifted with its power. Many other abilities were given to what were known as the Legacy Holders. Abilities like being able to shoot balls of fire from their bare hands, or being able to create tsunamis by calling to the ocean deep striking down lightning from the heavens to split entire mountains into two, or summoning a tornado straight down from even the calmest of clouds above. However, the legacy holders chose to live just like any other human, only using their abilities when absolutely necessary. Powerful beings they are, yes, but they were also human. As such, they were not invulnerable to the forces of darkness. Millions of years would pass, and one legacy holder after another was born and died. People were thriving in these times. Cities, 
towns, villages scattered across the world. It was truly Minecraft's golden age. But like all good things, it eventually came to an end. Over time, as each legacy holder lived and died, the next would be more and more corrupted by darkness. The earlier legacy holders were easily able to ignore it, but as time went on, the newer ones became more and more seduced. They began doing things that were forbidden of them, and began ignoring things that were a threat to the balance. Eventually, one legacy holder fully embraced the evil within him, and began attacking the people of the world with the legacy's power. This legacy holder embraced the evil within halfway through his life. However, his offspring would accept it from birth. The legacy had been corrupted. The shift in the world's energy from neutral to evil caused the birth of different creatures. Monsters, who hunted at night and fled from sunlight. These creatures were loyal only to the legacy holders, which led some to believe that the dark legacy holders created them. One by one, the free people of the world fell to the power of the legacy. The legacy which had been twisted, perverted, and corrupted by those who wielded it. Many believed that Notch would step in and stop them before they themselves caused the balance to break. But, he never came. The delicate balance, the one that Notch worked so hard to create, the one that these men were created to protect and maintain, was broken. As centuries turned into millennia, the world fell further and further down. Life was being extinguished at rates beyond imagination. 500,000 years, the world was out of balance. Still some life was clinging on. But the cities, towns, and villages were destroyed. Towers collapsed. Houses burned. Windows shattered. A planet with civilization was replaced by just biomes. The biomes once filled with so much now had nothing but their natural inhabitants. Some small villages survived, but eventually they too will be obliterated. A new legacy holder is born, this one named Andrew. Andrew was born unusually powerful with the legacy. Unknown to his parents, he would grow up to be the most powerful legacy holder to have ever lived. That and the most evil, and the most destructive. Andrew would lay waste to what was left of civilization. Andrew was far more evil than his forefathers. While those before him destroyed just to destroy, Andrew did it to inflict pain, to inflict fear, to suck the hope out of the innocent. Andrew's first victims were his own parents, the ones who taught him everything, the ones who gave him life. Andrew saw them as merely obstacles in his way. His forefathers would destroy life instantly, but he would draw out the process to inflict as much pain and fear as possible before stealing his victim's right to live. Andrew would eventually have an offspring of his own. Two sons, Brian and Ray. They too were born powerful with the legacy. However, not nearly as much as their father. Brian and Ray would be trained by Andrew to use the legacy. For a short time, Andrew's assaults were seized while he trained his sons. Brian, just like a machine following its programming, embraced the evil in his heart. Ray, however, wasn't as easy to be seduced. Andrew pushed for Ray to just embrace it and fulfill his destiny. The boys would grow in age and in power as their father watched with pride. As Ray grew, so did the conflict inside of him. You have too much of your mother in your boy, Andrew would say to Ray. The people of this world are weak. We are doing them a favor by exterminating their pathetic, useless lives. Ray would nod each time he would hear these words. Part of him wanted to believe it, but another screamed for him to abandon it. Ray was almost fully grown, and the conflict inside finally began to seize as one side was beginning to overpower the other, the light inside had finally prevailed. Now redeemed, Ray tried to redeem his brother and father. This is not the way, Ray said. The people of this world are not weak, they are just not as strong as us. 
We should be living among them, not destroying them. Can't you see how twisted our ancestors have been? How twisted we are being? We are destroying this world. But we can still save it. There's still a chance. Andrew looked down on his son in disappointment. I always knew you'd be a failure, Andrew would say, with hate staining his blood red eyes. You're weak, just like your mother. As such, you will join her in oblivion. Andrew reached out with his arms and grabbed his son by the neck. Ray pushed back with a blast of air, freeing himself from the deadly grasp. A long and bloody battle would begin. A battle between father and son. A battle between the forces of light and dark. The battle that would decide the fate of the planet. Both sides got their strikes in. However, Andrew was just far too powerful for Ray and was gaining on him. Ray knew this, and as such he diverted the battle into a rainy jungle, where there were plenty of places to hide. Andrew and Ray with their inhuman strength disintegrated vines and trees wherever they went. Andrew with his unbelievable power and control over fire burned everything in his sight, except for what he was aiming for. Ray continued to deflect the fire blasts in every direction to avoid being cooked alive. Andrew's attacks were beginning to become less and less accurate as he was being blinded by pure rage. Ray noticed this chance and took it. He landed one final blow to his father, pushing him back miles into the trees behind. Ray then took off from the entire biome itself, out of sight. Andrew regaining his posture would search and search, but to no avail. Ray was long gone. Realizing this, Andrew let out a scream, fueled by pure rage and hate that in turn created a crater in the center of the jungle. Although neither father or son was victorious in the battle, the forces of darkness had been as the world's balance would continue to fall in the years to come. Ray would run, and run, and run, as fast as his legs could carry him. He could hear his father's screams in the distance. After what seemed like an eternity of running, he finally stopped. Gasping for air, he looked at his surroundings. Grass, trees, rivers, and flowers surrounded him. But he could also see in the distance, what seemed like a village? No, it couldn't be. All remaining life was destroyed, right? Ray limped towards the village, his legs about to give away after all the strain he put on them. When he entered the village, he was shocked to see a few villagers still alive. The town showed signs of being attacked before. Broken windows, scorched marks on the cobblestone roads, trees stripped of their leaves. The sense of uneasiness the villagers felt, and the scars on their faces. He knew he would never show any signs of being a legacy holder to them, or else they'd run in fear. But exhaustion was beginning to take hold. Before he knew it, darkness took him, and he collapsed onto the ground. Ray awoke to a scene he didn't remember leaving off in. It looked like a house. Before he could ask any questions, a white-robed villager entered the room. Huh, you're finally awake, the man said. Where am I? asked Ray weakly, still not fully recovered. You're in my village. You came to us from the east. We thought you came to trade with us, but then you suddenly collapsed. Tell me, what happened to you? Ray paused to think of a response. He couldn't possibly tell them what happened with Andrew. I was ambushed by, uh, zombies. Ray said nervously. Zombies? Ah, yes. A nasty group of troublemakers they are. They always attack our villages, seeking to turn us into one of them. Well, it would seem you avoided becoming a zombie, since, well, I don't see you having green skin or the urge to attack me. Huh. <sighs> yeah, of course. Ray chucked. It's best you stay here and rest and let those wounds of yours heal. Wounds? Ray asked. He removed the blanket and looked around his body. Burn marks, gashes, and bruises covered him. I don't remember taking this much damage. Ray thought to himself. Oh, I almost forgot to ask. What's your name? Oh, it's Ray. 
My name is Ray. Ray answered in a matching polite tone. Pleasure to meet you, Ray. My name is Rob. I am the healer of this village. On behalf of my people, we are happy to have you. Well, Rob, thank you very much for taking me in during my time of need. Ray smiled. Very good. Now, is there anything I can get for you? Warm soup? Any wounds that need stitching or bandages? I think some soup would be nice. Rob left the room, and the silence that Ray woke up to returned. Why did Father feel the need to attack these people? They're such pure beings that never wanted ill will to anyone, Ray thought. Ray would stay with the villagers until he was fully healed. Once he did, he thanked them for their kindness and went off on his own. He was on the run, as he knew his father and brother would be hunting him down for his betrayal. At times he could almost feel their hatred in the air. The fact that he alone holds the duty of restoring balance was a burden beyond imagination. He knew he couldn't do it alone. However, himself, his father, and his brother are the only beings in the world who hold the legacy's power. The last of the Campbell bloodline. When he left the village, all he had was a few loaves of bread, kindly gifted to him by the villagers, and the clothes on his back. The Campbell family, before being gifted the power of the legacy, were survivalists. The instinct to survive was planted within them all for generations. However, after the family was tasked with maintaining balance, the desire to be survivalists was replaced by the will to maintain balance. Of course, this didn't last, but Ray still held some of that survivalist instinct. He used it to help him cut down trees, build tools, mine, and even build. He built small shelters for himself to protect from the monsters of the night, as they too, on Andrew's orders, were hunting him. Another thing that Campbells were known for was their dueling skills. Andrew taught Ray and Brian how to use the sword and to survive a deadly duel. They were specifically tasked to ignore villagers and other basic life forms and to hunt down and destroy Ray. Ray would run into them on occasion and would easily outperform them in the duel striking them down within the first two minutes of the duel most of the time. These skills of dueling would be essential for not only him, but the future descendants for their adventures in the future. Faith Fulfilled Mike's Legacy Chapter 2 Birth of the Braveheart Ray only stayed in his shelters for a brief time. He didn't want to stay in one place for too long as to lower the chances of his family or their minions finding him. Walking the forest of Minecraft, Ray could hear a struggle somewhere. Naturally, like a fighter, he followed the sounds and he would soon find its source. A girl, all alone, was fighting a horde of zombies and skeletons. Ray took out his white iron blade and jumped in to help her. He thought she'd be the stereotypical damsel in distress, but she was proving that she can hold her own for quite some time but the amount of enemies in front of her was just far too much. She had bite marks, and arrows all over her, and the fatigue of fighting so many monsters was visible in her staggering steps. Ray was trained by his father on how to deflect incoming arrows with his sword, and so he performed it with elegance. With each swing of his blade, more monsters fell. During a small lull of the fighting, he turns to the girl. You all right? Ray asked with concern. Yeah, I am now, the girl would say, surprised that anyone was around to help yeah! her. With the girl's confidence restored, she got on her feet and drew her chipped iron sword. Ray would draw his diamond sword, dropping the broken iron blade he was wielding before, and together they charged at their enemies. The agonized screams from the monsters and battle cries from two living warriors filled the air. Clangs of iron and diamond swords, the shots from arrows and blood from hard punches surrounded the area. A few elite zombies were present, and Ray battled them all at once, slaying each of them. Backs against one another, they fought like a perfect team. Each one's offensive and defensive strategies complementing the other. It was like two halves of the same whole, fighting as one. The few surviving creatures would flee, 
giving victory to Ray and his new friend. Oh, what a fight that was, the girl would say, letting out a long breath of relief. Yeah, it sure was, Ray answered. The two put their respective swords into their inventories. Then they took a long look at one another. Silence would follow, as they looked into each other's eyes. What is your name? Ray would ask, breaking the long silence. Amy. My name is Amy Wintry. Thank you for helping me out there. She would answer. My name is Ray Ka I mean, uh, Jones. And, uh, no problem. Ray would answer nervously. It was known throughout the world that the Campbells were the legacy holders. Having her know that he was a Campbell could either make her run in fear or drive her to try and kill him right then and there. We fight really well together, don't we? Amy would say, a small smile making its way to her lips. I was going to say the same thing, Ray said, with a matching smile. Although it was not known to them yet, this would be the beginning of a long companionship. They would stick together and survive together. Ray and Amy would fight alongside one another in plenty of other battles. During these battles, it became more apparent to Ray that Amy, while talented with a blade, needed to learn to duel if she was going to survive. Ray would teach Amy the basics in how to duel with a sword. Amy was a bit sloppy at first, but eventually she caught on and became an excellent duelist. She would never surpass her teacher. Over time, the two would develop feelings for each other beyond that of friendship. They kept it to themselves for a while, as they were afraid of rejection. That, and because their own survival was more important than any romance between them, they would do everything for each other. Mining, fighting, hunting, fishing, building, you name it. Their feelings for one another grew with every day. Ray was conflicted about admitting his feelings to her. I can't be with her unless she knows who I really am. Being with her while living a lie would just be unbearable, Ray thought to himself. Amy had told him before that her family was murdered by the current legacy holder. Ray knew that it must have been either his father or Brian who committed this act. Ray and Amy had known each other for a year and a half now, and now they each lived in a permanent home, their houses right across from each other. The houses were located in an area hidden with a tall forest so that the legacy holders and their minions would have trouble finding them. The forest had its own decent-sized lake for fishing. This would be their food supply. At the heart of the forest, there was a huge ravine, which connected to seemingly endless caves. Iron, coal, redstone, and gold were everywhere. And of course, being a forest, it had no shortage of trees, which satisfied the need for wood. It was rare that they ever needed to leave the forest. Because of this, things began to settle down for the pair. Amy saw the time was right to confess her feelings to Ray. By the end of it all, they were officially a couple. However, Ray couldn't will himself to tell Amy who he really is. Shortly afterward, they'd abandoned their old houses and used many of their resources to build a new house to live in together. This would prove to be a mistake, because shortly after the house's completion, it was assaulted by hordes of monsters on the behalf of Brian. Andrew had found out that Ray had found a partner and was not pleased, because Andrew knew that if Ray were to have any offspring, they would become a threat to him too. So he commanded Brian to send his minions to destroy Ray before he could have the chance to have children. Brian, underestimating the skill his brother possessed, was defeated every time he sent an attack on their house. These constant assaults caused the couple to be on the run once again, building small shelters to live in for short amounts of time before having to move on again. Eventually, Ray did tell Amy of his origins. He told her of his abilities, his father and brother, everything. Ray, expecting to be left alone from that point, waited. But the rejection never came, and Amy never stopped smiling. 
I know. I know, Ray. I've known for a while now. She said with a comforting voice. B but how? How could you possibly- Pretty sure you lifting the water from the lake with just a lift of your arm is something only a legacy holder is capable of. Plus, why else would all these monsters be just attacking us? <laughs> Amy said, giggling. How come you didn't leave me then? Our family murdered so many innocent people. Ray asked with confusion. You're not like them. Not anywhere remotely. If you were like them, you would have killed me the first night we met. Amy replied. Now, with a clear conscience, their relationship only grew. For years they continued to be hunted, and for years they continued to run. One day, on an unusually peaceful day, with no assault from monsters, no hurricane force storms, created by Andrew himself in an attempt to wipe them off the planet, unbeknownst to anyone on the planet, the seeds of hope and change were planted. Amy was pregnant. But not with just an ordinary child. This was the child that is destined to destroy the darkness looming in the legacy, redeem the Campbell name, and restore balance to the world. Andrew's worst fear had been realized. A child, given the gifts of the legacy, was born. This child, like Andrew, was born unusually strong with the legacy. Ray felt this child's extreme power almost immediately after his birth. At first, Ray had felt joy and hope for the future. Imagining himself training the boy to use his power, envisioning a world of peace and order that his son had brought. These happy thoughts were soon to be put to rest, however, as more dark thoughts clouded his mind. The room darkened, but it was just midday. How could this be? Ray found himself in a black void with nothing. Nothing but a figure in the distance. What is this? Did I fall asleep? Ray thought to himself. His natural curiosity drove him to get closer to the unmoving figure. As he got closer, he got a better look at who the figure was. Notch? No, that's impossible. I must be dreaming. Before he could say another word, the figure put his hand on Ray's head. Ray began being shown a variety of visions. His son, growing up into a man, turning into a warrior just like his father. But the positivity from these visions stopped there. Ray saw a young warrior, blinded by rage, attacking a scared girl. The same warrior, with the palms of his hands, shooting infernos of fire down into villages and towns below. The vision then turned to this man, kneeling down before... No, it couldn't be. Andrew? Now seeing the same warrior, with dual blades, striking down his own friends and family, this man showing no remorse for any of these horrible deeds. The figure took his hand off Ray's head, and the vision stopped. Ray looked on at the figure. Notch, what have you shown me? Ray said with a weak voice. The void began turning back into the room he had previously been in. The figure would slowly fade away as Ray would be brought back to reality. As he caught up with his breath, he began to think long and hard about what he had just seen. Ray looked down at his newly born son, but not with joy as most fathers do, but with fear. Fear of what he could become. Fear of what his child could bring upon the world. He couldn't live with himself, knowing he had created the world's own destruction. Ray would go to Amy, with the scenario he had in mind, of how much evil and how much destruction their own son could bring on to the world. He proposed that he must never be allowed to realize his powers. Amy reluctantly agreed that for the safety of the world, it had to be done. What started out with such promise would now end with tragedy. Ray would take his own son far away from his home. 
Ray would find a decent-sized village and decided to leave the boy with them. He instructed them to take care of him and to keep him from harm. Before the villagers could respond, Ray took one final look at his son, then turned and walked away. The child cried out loud, almost as if he knew he was being left behind. Faith Fulfilled Mike's Legacy Chapter 3 The First Clash He will be coming soon, Ray said with a hint of fear in his voice. What do you mean? Who's coming? said Amy, with concern. He must know by now that his army of monsters won't be enough to take us down. Brian will personally confront us. It's only a matter of time. Ray's prediction did eventually come true. As the sun rose over the horizon, and the winds blew over the ocean near the new shelter, Ray felt it in his bones that he was approaching. Grabbing Amy, Ray pulls her into a hug, holding her so tight that air began to leave her lungs. Pulling out of the hug, he looks into Amy's eyes. Listen to me very carefully, Amy. Brian is on his way as we speak. I want you to run as far away from here as you can. Understand? Ray said with a stern face. I'm not leaving you behind! Yelled Amy. You don't stand a chance against him. I know my brother inside and out, including his weaknesses. So just trust me. Now go! Ray yelled back. Dark clouds began emerging above in response to the massive dark energy emitting from below. Amy wanted to help him so very bad, but she knew that this was something she did not possess the strength to have any part in. So she ran, ran as fast as her legs could carry her. Ray looked on in the distance, waiting for his brother to show himself. What a surprise, said a voice in the distance sarcastically. Still a coward as always, I see. Ray clenched up, as Brian showed himself through the bushes. Coward you call me. You and father always attack the weak and defenseless. That seems like cowardice to me. Ray said angrily. Well then, it's time to continue that pattern with you then. Brian said with a wicked smile on his face. Both brothers stood facing one another, waiting for the other to make the first move. A long pause would follow. Until Brian would break it, saying, Tell me, did you really think you could save the boy? I don't know what you're talking about. Ray lied through his teeth. Brian's menacing smile would grow. You should be aware that father is all-knowing. We know about your son. Brian said. I have no children. Your twisted nature has clouded your minds if you truly believe that. Ray said, again, lying through his teeth. Well, it doesn't really matter if you want to admit it to me or not. The boy was born with a strong connection to the legacy, but with a weak heart, just like his father. Brian said as he laughed. Ray said nothing. Your attempt at hiding him away will not be enough to save him. We may not know where he is just yet, but I assure you, we will find him. None can escape our everlasting vision. Especially those who are weak. Ray's anger grew inside him. Well then, it's time to do what nature calls of us now. Time for the weak link in the bloodline to die, and the strong one to survive and prosper. The winds had picked up. The dark clouds above rotated, and the oceans began to stir up. Two brothers, who once trained together, who once did everything together, were now set to destroy each other. Brian drew his blade, a blade that has been used to slaughter countless innocents, stained in red. Ray drew his own, this one clean, shiny, and blue as the diamonds were when he mined them. The long silence finally broke when Ray let out a yell of anger and ran towards his brother. Ah! A clash of blades and legacy power showcased in the light of day that would go on until the dimness of sunset. Both fighters showed incredible display of power over their abilities, Brian chucking balls of fire like they were mere baseballs, Ray ripping rock and stone right out of the ground below and hurling them. Ray tried many times to seal Brian away to the nether by opening a portal with his hands, but Brian was prepared for this kind of offensive 
and always had an object to throw inside the portal to close it. Surely father taught you more than this, Brian said mockingly. I've learned enough, Ray replied, as he shot currents of water from the nearby ocean at his opponent, who was unfazed by it. While you are running like a coward for all these years, I've been training. While you got weaker and softer, I got stronger. I have become more powerful than you can possibly imagine, Ray. You are doomed to die here. Brian would say as they locked blades. Ray was a powerful legacy holder, but it was true. While he was running, he knew Andrew trained Brian harder and harder every day. Ray was going all out in this battle, not holding back one bit. Brian, on the other hand, was just toying with his opponent. With just one finger, Brian summoned mammoth-sized infernos, designed to swallow Ray whole. With just a single thought of mind, Brian ripped entire mine shafts right out of the caves they rested in and threw them in all directions. Ray struggled to keep up with his insanely powerful foe. While the unbelievable display of power that Brian had was terrifying, what horrified Ray the most was that there was still one out there, even more powerful. The fact that Brian still kneeled down and called someone master. If this isn't even the fullest display of raw power that existed in the now corrupted legacy, or even in Brian himself, then how can there be hope for balance being restored? Brian, having the time of his life, continued ripping apart the lands around him and using it as ammo to throw. Ray was barely dodging each attack, taking small hits every time, but every small hit added up. They drew blades once again, as Brian, filled with rage for his brother's betrayal, slashed at Ray. We could have done so much together, but you let weakness take you. Now look at you, just as weak as these people that litter our world. Brian screamed. Brian slashed again, landing a devastating blow on Ray's eye. Blood dripped down from his face as he scrambled to get some distance. Ray had to do something quickly before Brian lands a fatal blow. He knew he wasn't strong enough to kill Brian, so he had to temporarily subdue him. But how? Their long battle had traveled far across the lands, leaving destruction wherever they went. They now found themselves approaching a large ravine filled with boiling lava. This was his chance. Ray directed Brian closer to the ravine and threw a gust of wind in Brian's direction, pushing him away for a brief time. All the time Ray needed to control the lava. Ray reached deep within the planet and summoned as much hot lava as he possibly could with the little time he had. When Brian got close enough, Ray pushed all the lava up to the surface. The ground cracked and shook as the lava made its way up as a great wall of fire separated the two brothers. Ray then ran as fast as his superhuman legs could go away from the scene, as the barrier of fire and lava finally sunk back into the ground. Brian looked in all directions for his fleeing brother. He was nowhere in sight. He has escaped. Brian stared off into the distance. Father will not be pleased, Brian said, in fear of what Andrew would do to him as a result of his failure. Ray would eventually reunite with Amy. Upon first sight of her lover, she gasped. A large wound could be seen on Ray's eye. As soon as Ray found his way into Amy's arm, he collapsed onto the ground. Amy runs off and finds a village to take Ray to for medical attention. The wound would never fully heal, and he would lose partial sight in that eye. The mark would forever be a part of him, as a physical and mental scar. Ray knew that Brian was going to be a tough opponent to defeat, but he never imagined he'd become this strong. His son will never know of his abilities, so this means Ray is the last chance the world has, but this last hope has given up.